Welcome to Help Desk with Joe, show number 142, where we have an exciting week of updates and things that are good for everybody to know, and uh, helping out the community, helping about, helping out individuals, and helping out businesses. As always, here with me, Justin and Joe. Good morning, fellas. Good morning. Good morning. This show hosted by A&M Digital Technologies, and uh, one expert and two uh, guys that just <laughs> ask him questions. Well, time out. Who's the expert? <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> but yeah, uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, that's not good. <laughs> We're not sure who the expert is in this group. There are some issues. Um, I guess it'd be Justin since he's the adult in the group. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, on some days, I agree with you. On others, I'm not sure. But, uh, Anyway, off to a good start this week. Uh, it's one of the hottest weeks so far we've had this summer, which uh, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but today is the hot day. It's going to be like 95 out. Uh, yesterday was hot. Yeah, it was rough yesterday. Yeah, well, what drives me nuts is like the only people that are surprised by that is like the weatherman. It's yeah. Like, it's cool. Yeah. I don't remember being this hot. Hey, genius. Last summer. Yeah. <laughs> it does this this time of year for some reason. Yeah, it's just that time of year. But, uh, man, that's a Phoenix. I heard this morning Phoenix won 13 again for like the <laughs> second or third day in a row. I don't know why anybody would live there. I don't know what's yeah, going. on purpose. And there's a lot of people that live there. Like, Phoenix is a big city. Yeah, and, and they're all shocked that it gets that hot. And we're sitting here in West Virginia going, like, really, geniuses? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's craziness. So, um, we had... Uh, some good stuff happened this week. All our programs ended, and then um, our summer soccer program ended here at Patch. So it's been a pretty busy week here, and now we'll get to get into the part of summer where we prepare for our fall programs for after school. So I'm going to say get that two-week calm before oh, the next gosh. level chaos. It's is. not even calm. That, that's the crazy <laughs> part. We, we're like, all right, we can breathe. It's like an hour. Uh, yeah, and we're already uh, working with Worth County to get their after-school programs ready and arranged because it's not far off, boys. School right. starts in uh, three, four weeks here. So I, I can't believe that yeah I know it's craziness so we're right back at it uh you know you got one day of breath and then it's okay start preparing for fall because it, it comes quick yeah uh, anyway on to some good stuff you got to talk about today Joe and I'm, I'm excited because we have tip of the week which is always great uh, I have a son going to college again for the second year and you said your tip of the week revolves around college yes that's wonderful I'm excited for it but before we get to there Let's uh, talk a little bit about your first story, and uh, gosh, I know the other two. I forgot this one already. Yeah, this is surrounding digital libraries. Oh, yeah, digital libraries. There yeah. you go. So, job. Dave, I know you are a frequent flyer of libraries and digital libraries and such. Yep. So, so as soon as I saw this story, I was like, this is going to stir up some interesting conversation. Okay, lay it on me. I'm ready. There's a new app out that's being released that's going to allow you to read banned books. You know, this whole thing, we need to ban all these books for X, Y, and Z reasons. Okay. I've heard that. I don't know the specifics of what books. I've heard well, some people like, saying, like, are you kidding me? This book is banned? Like, Well, like, the first thing that pops that, in my head was, like, there was one or two Dr. Seuss books that made the list. Yeah. Wow. Well, people are knuckleheads. They ban a lot of stuff. Anyway. Yeah. I, how are they banned exactly? That that would be my first like, question. Okay. I'm just not familiar. I know people go around and say, these books are banned, and they try to pull them out of libraries, but it well, seems like a pretty big task. Well, like, okay, so for example, the Dr. Seuss books, mm -hmm. like, cancel culture went in this big charade online of, you know, uh, stop buying Dr. Seuss books, blah, blah, blah. And basically made bookstores pull those books off the shelves. Okay, so bookstores literally had to pull them off the yes. shelves. But I'm not... Who, who has the authority to tell a bookstore what book they can sell or not? I guess the corporate executives, because they don't catch any "quote unquote" backlash. Hmm. Okay. For being racist or whatever, yeah. whatever they want the, to call the it. The Lorax is yellow. We hate him. Yes, basically. <laughs> so, <laughs> poor Lorax. I, actually, I don't know what books are banned because I, I read them all anyway, so it's alright. Well, that just entices me to read them more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> So the Digital Public Library of America has launched a new program that provides users with free access to books that are banned in their area. The program called the Banned Book Club provides readers with free access to books pulled from shelves for, of their local libraries. The e-books will be available to readers via the Palace e-reader app. And they said in a quote, at DPLA our mission is to ensure access to knowledge of all we believe in power of technology to further that access. And this is according to John S. Bracken, executive director of the 
DPLA in a news release. He continues to say, quote, today books ban book bans are on the greatest threats to our freedom and we have created the Banned Book Club to leverage the dual powers of libraries and digital technology to ensure that every American can access the books they want to read, end quote. So according to the news release, the DPLA uses GPS-based geotargeting to establish virtual libraries in communities across the country where books have been banned. So it's not across the board, right? but probably, I'm going to at least start out with at least California, it's usually where a lot of this starts. Like, so people in California, there's, I guarantee there's like a whole group of people that are just like completely melting down in their shoes. Of, Ooh. So I just, I just put in banned books real quick. Uh, Charlotte's Web is banned in Kansas. Really? Because it has themes of death and uh, the main characters are talking animals. Oh, good night. So good job, Kansas. Um, we don't expect a whole lot from people that live amongst the corn, but... <laughs> Children of the corn. I've driven through Kansas. <laughs> believe me, corn and soy. Yeah. If I lived in corn and soy, I would have weird thoughts as well. <laughs> you think the animals talk to you too? Oh my god. Yeah, they're probably like, wait a minute, this is real. My yeah. animals do talk to me. Yeah. We can't have that in a book. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, how is the room not banned? It might be on the list. It should yeah. be. Yeah. If you're not familiar with the movie The Room, thank you, Justin. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Consider yourself be. lucky. Yeah. <laughs> that should be banned just on premise alone. I think we could all get behind that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still waiting for his new shark movie to come out. Oh, my God. What's it called? Like, Huge Shark or something? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> now, quick question. Are, they're available online to read, like, on your phone? Yeah. You can read the books on your phone? Yeah, it's kind of like um, or, or on the a Kindle computer. app or, yeah. or, or one of those similar yeah. apps, yes. All right, now, Green Eggs and Ham was ham was banned in uh, China in 1965. Well, you kind of expect that out of there, though. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, no, 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 no. James and Giant Peach. No, no, there's all kinds of crazy ones. But it's by small areas that ban these things. Okay. The Great um, Gatsby was banned at some point. If I ran the zoo, that was the most recent banned book of Dr. Seuss. Who banned it? Cancel Culture. I mean, was it in general the book companies? or Yeah, the publisher, I guess. Gets pressure and then they said, okay, we won't publish those books anymore. Yeah. yeah this was in March of 21 because uh, they was due to racial, racist stereotypes that portray people in ways that are hurtful and wrong. Wow, yeah, there's a lot actually. Uh, Great Gatsby, Catcher in a Rye, Grapes of Wrath, Kill a Mockingbird, Call a Purple, Ulysses, Lord of the Flies. My goodness, people. So, Char Charlie and the, and the Chocolate Factory by Ronald Dahl. But have no fear, the band book club is here. Well, you know. I, I haven't downloaded the app yet. For some reason, I just got this feeling like in the state of West Virginia, it'll, it'll like show zero. Well, I, here's the good news. I already own most of these books. All right, so, so you're good. Yeah, so I can just pick them up and read. I've already read them, but I can pick them up and read them again. I'm going to go on what social media I don't use and just take a picture of me holding all of them. <laughs> but like, come get them. Yeah. You can pry them from my dead cold fingers. Why well, say just lay them on the floor and like do like a snow angel like on your carpet? <laughs> I uh, you tear them up. Well, no, 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 no. Just take a picture. Yeah, yeah, if you pick laying in the middle of all of them surrounding you. Man, yeah. Oh, gosh, I I understand some of it, but you know, it's it's art. Yeah, writing is art. That's just how it is. And, and you don't. And and, and and they act like we're forcing them to. That, sit down and read the book. That's the real problem right there is that uh, once you kind of sit in and say, okay, <clears throat> it's not like somebody's walking around handing you these books. So, right. you know, there there are groups that go around, knock on your door and catch you in the street. And I, I'll say uh, probably the least favorite is the Harry Carey ones at the airports and stuff in their robes that yeah. try to hand you pamphlets and stuff. And, you know, you're just like, you're forcing that on me. Just hold it out. And if I want to grab it, I will. But otherwise, get out of my face. Right. Um, you know, it's different if you're doing that, saying, Joe, you must read Catcher in the Rye and Green Eggs and Ham all at once. Yeah. But nobody's doing that. So right. if you don't want to go buy it, don't go buy it. Yeah. I mean, it's easy. It's simple. I, I, people are knuckleheads. <laughs>
See, that's what I was Here's the problem. I okay. think all these people that are banning them don't actually read. Well, that's probably the start of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would be very, very strongly uh, encouraged that that is the number one thing. Because, like, if you've read The Catcher in the Rye, you understand what it's about and why some of that language is used. If you've read The Great Gatsby, you understand why that premise is, is there. Um, but, you know, these knuckleheads haven't read them. No. And they're just like, no, no, it has these words in it, so therefore it's bad. In the context that it's used, it's not necessarily offensive. Right. But, oh boy. Anyway. I figured that I mean, would... there, there are a lot of books out there that nobody <laughs> complains about that has a lot of offensive stuff in it. Yeah. But, we'll let that go. Anyway. Right. I mean, you know, I think they should ban Where the Red Fern Grew just because the ending's sad. <laughs> <laughs> that brings old Yeller into the picture too. Yeah. <laughs> now watch somebody else start some. Somebody will hear this and go, "Blood on your Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, you're right. Oh, Red Fern Grows is a tearjerker, man. Yeah. God, why you gotta bring that up? <laughs> I love that book. That's a good one. I read that with our, my high school class when I taught in high school. I don't know if you remember Joe. Nah, you played football. You, I didn't have any class. Yeah. But uh, we read Where the Red Fern Grows. Gosh. Some of the toughest guys were in that class, and they were all like, well, we're going to read this sad book. <laughs> <laughs> they were loving the story up until the end. Yeah, so. yeah. But anyway. Question uh, for you, Joe. All right, sir. So, like, is this company then going to go out? Obviously, they got to pay the rights for these books. <laughs> They're going to go pay the authors of these banned books? Or what's going on there like I would say that probably they can't just offer them for free and not pay anybody right well since they're the digital public library of America I'm going to say that they may fall under like the same <clears throat> like a library public yeah, domain. library would yeah, yeah. Okay. but I think the libraries have to pay a little bit of something for the books right I think I think they pay yeah like yeah like they get like a discounted rate or something yeah, on the book fee. <laughs> yeah okay well anyway if you don't already own these books and you want to go get them this is the way to get it. I only read banned books. That's what it, <laughs> somebody that just only goes on this app. And, that's the only books I read, banned ones. Talking animals are kind of weird, but... I, yeah. I, 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 and I know this is controversial, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway, but it just seems like this whole snowflake <laughs> thing was used inappropriately the first go-around, and we could pretty much whitewash it across everybody now. Yes. And say the whole snowflake theme is just rampant. Yes. Everybody's... <laughs> Feelings hurt about everything. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you gotta tell me I gotta read a book that I'm not gonna read that I didn't even know about in the first place. <laughs> I'm offended. Yeah. <laughs> That's what gets me. I'm serious. I really don't I don't I don't know anybody, hardly, now that would read any of those books. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'm willing to bet the house on them that they're the ones complaining about them. Yeah. Never read them, had no attention to reading them. Somebody said, like in well, school, said you got to read this, and oh, no, 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 no. Let, let's take a quick poll here. Okay. Have you guys, let me go back to the list. Have you guys read, um, mm, let's see, Catcher in the Rye, for instance? No. Don't think so. Okay. Um, Greg Gatsby? No. I'm disappointed in both of them. <laughs> Don't be disappointed in us, be disappointed in the school system. <laughs> Green eggs and ham? Yes. Okay, well, you're not in China, so you're allowed to. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of the, the crazy part. To Kill a Mockingbird? Nope. Yeah, in class, I think. I was going to say, that one's pretty big in, like, freshman English. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. No, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, that was... Atticus That Ridge. was one who flew over Cuckoo's Nest. The, the Ooh, you read that? Yeah. That's a good one. By golly. Yeah. That's got to be banned. Yeah. <laughs> it deals with a mental institution and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Huh. You ever seen the movie of Jack Nicholson? I tried to, but... Miss Ratchet? Boy, she's a mean one. I, I started it and it's like, it wasn't as good as the book, so I, I couldn't sit through That's it. That's the hard part. Yeah, yeah. The book is awesome. Yeah. Okay. But it's been... it's been. Jeannie B. Jones? Nope. Hmm. Your daughter might be. <clears throat> well, I don't know. If you let her read any bad books. Judy B. Poor grammar, punctuation, and a disrespectful attitude by Jeannie B. Oh my. I know. She struggles. <laughs> How will we ever recover? <laughs> James the Giant Peach. Uh, anyway. Okay. Well, you two are some of the more literate 
people I know. So uh, if you, you, must have, not know, you must not know a lot of people. <laughs> very true. Very true. I'm just speaking on my, on my behalf. I'm not, I'm not speaking for Jess. I'm just speaking for me. <laughs> so if you guys haven't read those books, then I doubt a lot of people have. Right. I would say 90% of the people that you know were around in the community have not read those. I'd say it's probably higher than that because you have to go out of your way to read The Great Grad, Great Gatsby. It's about the 1920s, 30s, somewhere in that area. You know, just kind of a privileged lifestyle type deal. Catcher in the Rye is J.D. Salinger's kind of marketplace uh, book. It's about a teenager, you know, back in the 40s. I don't know. It's kind of like Jack Kerouac. you got to want to read something really about the lifestyle then. Yeah. So that's all they are. But I don't know. Anyway. All right. I think we're safe from the band book list for now. <laughs> Nobody get too tore up about it. It'll be all right. Well, while we're I mean, getting... here's the crazy part. Okay. You're right. This is controversial. Um, we're okay with the movies that are shown now. Yeah. I mean, kids can watch movies where there's nudity, sexual scenes, tons of tons of profanity on regular TV. Yeah. And that, that's okay. Yeah. You know, that, I would almost say Disney is pushing the envelope with the way their characters dress. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's not panning out well for them. But over the last set of movies, like in the last year, have have lost money. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know what they're doing, but uh, uh, they're 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 knuckling under cancel culture. Okay, but you know what I'm saying? That you can turn on regular TV now, and they cuss like nobody's business, mm-hmm. and you know the dress is horrible, and reality shows run rampant with um, anything and everything. Anything and everything. Yep, with tons of insinuations. And then, but that's okay. Yeah, we we got to go after classic novels. Yeah, we can't go. Nobody reads anyway. Yeah, but we got to cancel good, clean, fun like Charlotte's Web. Yeah, <laughs> it is a farm. I don't know how clean it is, but you know. Well, as clean as a farm can be, I would assume. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on, on to the next one, Spotify, Joe. Yeah, yeah. So while we're in this uh, dark and depressing mode, let's go on oh, to the second story. You're not gonna take Spotify away as well, are you? I don't know. I'm not. They're gonna take something away from you. Not oh, great. More I don't on. pay for it. So oh, okay. That's okay, well, then you're fine then. I thought you had a paid subscription. Uh, I used to, but I stopped paying for it okay. a couple years ago. Well, you picked the right time because Spotify is raising their rates. Right. So, Justin, get the get the buckets ready, mm-hmm. the telephone buckets. Okay. The music streaming service announced Monday that it would be raising its rates across its four subscription plans with the change beginning uh, bringing up costs from between $1 to $2 per month in, on U.S. subscribers. The price hike will affect more than 50 markets and comes as a number of Spotify competitors raise prices. Uh, so they say in a statement, the market landscape has continued to evolve since we launched, and so we are keeping innovating and we are changing our premium prices across a number of markets around the world. These updates will help us continue to deliver value to fans and artists on our platform, end quote. So here's how the price hike breaks down. Can I just say, it's like a copy and paste uh, statement that they always release. Though. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. we're we're gonna make things so much better, and yeah, know, yeah, the market has changed basically. Yeah, it's almost like they have, everybody gets this one template and like, okay, <laughs> just change the name at the top and just submit. Uh, so the individual plan, I meant for one account, is bumping up nine ninety nine to ten ninety nine. The duo plan for two accounts is bumping up two dollars from twelve ninety nine to fourteen ninety nine. The family plan, which is up for up to six accounts is being bumped up a dollar from fifteen ninety nine to sixteen ninety nine and the student plan is being bumped up a dollar from four ninety nine to five ninety nine. So here's the weird part. They always show a net loss. Like for instance in twenty twenty two their net loss was four hundred and thirty million. And their net loss in twenty twenty one was thirty four million. But their total revenue grew by 14% in 2023, which is $3 billion. So I, I don't understand how their... Yeah, how that works. Yeah, their revenue is 14% higher to the tune of $3 billion, but their net <laughs> loss is $430 million. Yeah. Hmm. And their subscribers grew 17%. Yeah. Which is $3 million ahead of what they thought they would get. Yeah, I'm not very good at math, but that math don't add up. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're claiming losses somewhere. Yeah. And not able to fix it. Although, you know, they're they're still looking good. Like, again, the revenue for June 2023, so this is really recent, $3.18 billion. That's It's up 11%. But they claim their net income is minus $302 million. Huh. 
but they still have 107 million in cash, which is up, and their operating income is down 247 million. So I don't know. They're they're paying their executives too much. That's my guess. Yeah, something or something's the, not. Their shareholders are getting paid too much because something's not adding yeah, up. Yeah, they're paying out money, but they're yeah. above what they're making for some reason. Even though they're showing because I mean I don't revenue. you know I don't know. I don't know much about ASCAP and BMI fees that they have to pay for the music licensing. Yeah. Which I mean, I know that's a going to be a big chunk, but something don't add up. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're a pretty big company. They're a Swedish company. They got about eighty three hundred employees, and their revenue for twenty twenty two is eleven point seven billion. Hmm. So I, I don't know. I mean, it seems like they'd be good in good shape, but they're. I don't know. It's almost like they're spending money they don't have just because. Right. Their stock price is pretty solid, $149.13 today. So there you go. And it hadn't gained or went up or down. So, huh. Okay, Spotify users. Justin, get the buckets ready. Apparently, yeah. making <clears throat> $3.18 billion just isn't good enough. Yeah. 8675 309. <laughs> yeah. Any area code. Any area code. There you go. Help out old Spotify. It's struggling. Needs to make billions yes. more. <laughs> Gosh. I. I Somebody in the room. Bloody brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder when the last time they bumped the price up was. Couldn't have been more than a couple of years ago. Right? Probably not. Couldn't Just have been. Every couple of years. One more dollar. One more dollar. <laughs> yeah, nobody will pay attention. YouTube Premium just did the same thing recently. I got a notification. So they hit, they hit you then. Mm-hmm. But now, would you like guys like to at least end the news stories on a high note? Facebook? Yes. Lay it on me. Would you guys like some money? Yeah. Okay. Then listen up. You guys might be entitled to some Facebook money. All right. Wow. Yeah. It's got to be it's like insane. Monopoly money, kind of? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, this is a what kind of money we got? This is actually U.S. currency. Okay. So U.S. Facebook users have one month to apply for their share of a $725 million privacy settlement that parent company Meta agreed to pay last year, late oh, last year. Man. Yeah, I still didn't get like the seven cents that was owed me by somebody else that settled three years ago. Well, you know, we make we sit here and make these jokes on these class action lawsuits. Yeah. I filled out one a while back for Yahoo, since I have not a Yahoo email account. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I got a check a couple weeks ago for $65. What? Yeah, I, like I was shocked, and Cena got one too. Wow. Like that's the biggest, uh, you know, settlement check I've ever gotten. Like I, because I'm like I don't know if you guys use it. Oh yeah, I can use a nickel. And was like I got that. It was like sixty five dollars. I was like, I'm glad I filled that one out. Here we go. Yeah. That was taking us all. I think it just <laughs> yeah. sixty five dollars worth. Hey, it's twenty two dollars each. We're in good shape. There we go. We're perfect. So Meta is paying us to settle a lawsuit alleging the world's largest social media platform allowed millions of its users' personal information to be fed to. Cambridge and Analytica, a firm that uh, paid uh, a Facebook developer to access its personal information of about 87 million users on the platform. And then that company, in turn, used that to help uh, Donald Trump's 2016 presidential campaign. <laughs> so it was like, so, so, and, and I, I went on read the story, and it's like, and what drove me nuts is like, they was, trying to steer the end of the story to like get into politics and Donald Trump's a bad guy and all that. I'm like, oh, time out. Wait. This company just asked Facebook, hey, if we pay you X amount of dollars, can you give us this information? Facebook took the money mm-hmm. and gave it to them. wonder how much they paid for that info. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to say that's a good bit. Yeah. So, so all that company did was ask and Facebook said, Cut us a check. Boy, you're brilliant. Yeah. So so don't take it down this path of who's the real bad guy here. Facebook's the bad guy because they sold you out for a couple million dollars. And they've been the bad guy several times here. Yeah. I mean, I remember where he spoke to a congressional committee and then... Well, that's um, what started all this. Yeah, and then they had a whistleblower come out and say, no, what, you have emails floating around Facebook showing that social media affects teens' mental status. Yeah. And they ignored it. Yeah. yeah so so what the, the big hoopla is, is uh, Trump's campaign used that information that Facebook willingly gave them to help boost his uh, presidential campaign. 
they did nothing illegal. It's not like they, you know, hacked the network to get the information. This company said, "Hey, we get you got information. We want how much it'll cost." And yeah. So, so Facebook, yeah. I, I, as a Facebook user, I'm I'm mad that Facebook did this because they sold me out. Yeah. But I'm not mad at that other company because that other company just said, "Hey, can we do this?" And Facebook said, "Absolutely." So, when they brought the class action lawsuit, obviously it was successful, and what they did violated like the terms of service or whatever. Whatever you agree to when you yes. sign up with Facebook, they crossed the line there. Yes. Why would they? I mean, don't they have lawyers? I mean, why why wouldn't they? If you know, a company comes and says, "Can we?" have this info, they go, look, we're going to go talk to the lawyers and we'll see, make sure we're not crossing the line. And they're like, no. Yeah, it doesn't they, make any sense. Or or they would have a lawyer that say, you know what, let's tuck us in the newest disclaimer. Yeah. yeah. And it'll be okay. Yeah. Well, I think it's one of those, um, let's just do it and see if we can get away with it. Yeah. Like, so you're sitting at a table and somebody has, shows you a great big check. You're really gonna let that money walk away? It's silly. It seems silly. Oh yeah, it does. Put out a disclaimer, float it through. Air. Nobody reads those things. <laughs> but like, yeah, let the, it's one of those. Let's ask for forgiveness better than permission. Yeah, I wonder Man. what they were paid for the info, and then what they're gonna. Well, it's got if it's more than seven hundred twenty-five million, they made out. But if it's less, they're getting hit right now. I'm right. Sure, sure, it's more. But if you want to fill out your claim, gentlemen, the, the website is facebookuserprivacysettlement.com. Okay. So anybody can, uh, if, you're, if you're a Facebook user, if you've been, so here's the criteria. Anybody that's in the U.S. that has had a Facebook account at any time between May 24th of 2007 and December 22nd of 2022, you are eligible to receive payment. So you just have to fill out a form on that website, and the deadline is August 25th. So if, even if you have an inactive Facebook account now, if you had one active somewhere in that window, be sure to fill out the information. I'm on it. Awesome. You got me excited about this whole uh, $65 Yahoo check. Yeah. So $725 million here, and that says... Back in May, they got hit with 1.3 billion in the EU. Yeah, for stuff they're doing over there. I mean, it's just, jeez. Well, it, you know, it's one of those they just they they kicked the can as far as they could go, just see how far it would go. Well, mm -hmm. it went as far as it could win. Now, now the it's time to pay the piper. Man, I'm supposed to know my username? Um, go click on your Facebook and click on your profile on the computer and it'll pull up your username. Huh. When Here, let me look it up real quick. Did it say anything more. about when payment might be expected? Um, I think, well, I think they're getting kind of wait until we find out, they find out how many people signed up for payment mm -hmm. and Just then, then they can figure out how much money to disperse from there. So maybe couple months after the deadline or something? Probably, yeah. Hmm. I think mine's just my name. It is day... Uh, here, I'll, I've got it here. I won't, I won't <laughs> announce it on the... I can't figure out where to find it. This is how I have it. I, I, I got you. Yeah. Justin, you got yours. You need me to get yours as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, if you want to grab it, <laughs> fetch it for me. Uh, I got you, buddy. Yeah. Right, yeah. Good times. Yeah, so I'll I'll buy the that the information off there. Right. So <laughs> I'm the Don't social get the media coming for us. Guru, let me just tell you. <laughs> anyway, all right, Facebook. So get you some of that. Caught up in the scam. So the payout is <laughs> totally going to be dependent on how many apply, basically. And yeah. So the determined fewer, to be the fewer legitimate. people, the fewer people that apply, the more money you can get. So I should have kept my mouth yeah. shut so you two wouldn't sign up and I might have gotten like an oh, extra yeah, two yeah, cents yeah. out of it or something. <laughs> or half a cent or something, yeah. Yeah. I mean, what do you make of the whole idea? Just 
like tons of people getting a relatively small amount of money. I mean, I guess it's basically disincentive for the company. They get hit with a billion dollar fine, but <laughs> a regular person, their, say their data was used without their permission, then they get 30 bucks. I mean, is that justice, I guess? <laughs> in, in this case, my personal opinion, yes, because mm -hmm. it's, it's, I mean, we, I know we throw this term around, it's Facebook, we throw this around a lot. It's social media, so I mean, the whole point of social media is you put information out there just to, for the public to see, so I mean, there's not a lot of private information they could have taken, so, I mean, yes, there's some geolocation stuff, stuff like that, but for the most part, they're, they're interested in, you know, your, your name, your location, your... Mm -hmm. political views based off your posts. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's kind of scary on what they can find out from you. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. In this case, Facebook got, uh, has to pay for their oops. And uh, we get to, we get a little benefit out of it. So, and with these win win. Lawsuits, it seems like it's always a negotiation. And usually somebody's going to come in with a high number and then it gets whittled down to. Like the 725, I bet they probably came in with like <clears throat> multiple billions or something. Yeah. Is your username your personalized link on Facebook? Um, maybe. Let me text. I'll text you what. Uh, oh, that's the only thing I'm missing to submit mine. I can't figure anything out. I don't know what. I'm if we yeah, if we all get checks, we gotta celebrate. Go to La Finca. Oh yeah. Ooh. I'm going to La Finca yeah. either way. I'm gonna say Joe's sixty-five dollars. I'm gonna say like, do I really need another reason to go to La Finca? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm inviting Corey Clarkson too. It's like literally the only reason I need to go to La Finca is because the the sign says open. Yeah, that's probably my only reason I need yeah, to go. It's not Sunday. Yeah. There are closed Sundays, right? Yes. I got the Chick Fil A model going. I like it. All right, well, Joe, you got a tip of the week, right? Yes. So this week's tip of the week is the week. Uh, attention parents of first-time college students or if you are yourself as an adult uh, going to uh, mm -hmm. uh, college. Here are some tips to help on the technology side of things. I get this call. I, I've started getting in this call uh, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, Hey, my kid's going to college. What do I need? So here's here's Joe's tips on how to uh, wrangle in the uh, big big scary monster of technology. First thing to do, the first the big question is always, Hey, I need my kid needs a laptop. What do I need? And that's where I always have the parents pump the brakes and say, Hold on. What school are they going to, and what program are they studying? Mm -hmm. Because that that is a huge uh, deal there because depending on your school that you're going to and it doesn't have to be public or private it, it, it can be, yeah, I've seen it go both ways and it can literally be dependent on the particular field of study some schools or even some field of study in that particular school will let you bring in your own device or some of them make you buy their device and I have seen students come into college with their own device and the school say oh no, 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 you have to buy this yeah I bought a twelve hundred dollar MacBook. It don't matter. You gotta use our MacBooks, and it's already tied into your tuition. We yeah. will not let your computer on our network. So now they have two computers. They've got one from the school that they have to use, and a twelve hundred dollar boat anchor. And that that is um, true to like Kale goes to Marietta College. They provide him with a laptop that is already synced on their network. Everything's taken care of for him. All he's gotta do is pick it up and take off. Right. And it's I, I gotta say it's wonderful. Right. Just because we don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to worry about tech issues. If he has a problem, he takes it back to the tech department and they fix it. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the next thing is check and see if they have some kind of on-site repair. Yeah. Because, you know, unless you pay that premium, and it's usually for just business devices where you can get that next business day on-site repair work, Nine times out of ten on personal computers, you got to ship that stuff out. Yeah. And you're looking at at least a two-week window. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. So if if they offer that, chat, ask, well, it doesn't matter if they offer the where you buy your device them or not, ask about on-site repair. Say, hey, if my kid has a broken computer, what are my options on getting it repaired on-site? And, you know, some colleges may have, a lot of colleges have deals 
like you say, if you had to buy the, okay, Marietta College, for mm -hmm. example, yeah. Kel's first first prime example, you buy the device from the school, the school has on-site staff to uh, take care of whatever. The beauty of it. Yes. They didn't even have to buy it. Yeah. They give it to Oh, them. no, you, you paid for it. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Trust me, Dave, you yeah. paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> because it wasn't a line item doesn't mean it did, wasn't built. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. It's built into the tuition, which yes. is nice. Uh, but yeah, I, I got to say, though, huge headache relief. Yes. Because they don't, it's kind of wild. They don't print anything. Everything's submitted online. You know, it's all done, all all done yeah. through the internet, interweb. You know, it's all out there on the line. On the Google. Yeah, it's on the Google. <laughs> I, it's amazing. You know, I talked to him like, man, you're going to get go print that out. He's like, nah, just submit it. Yeah. Like, wow. This is, I, I don't know. Yeah, going forward, I mean, seems like we're going to be saving a fair number of trees compared to the old days where I hope people so. were printing 20 page things. But Well, I, I've yet to see it because since computers came out, we have used way more paper than we ever did handwriting stuff. Yeah. And, I, and I've seen it firsthand. Uh, I won't divulge the main details, but I've seen where I worked in, an, uh, I was working in a situation where that business went fully electronic. Yeah. Well, their software didn't work like it should, so instead of like taking this document and don't know if you put it into the next section, you had to print it off scan it back in for it to go into this next section. Mm -hmm. Like, I thought it was like, it is electronic. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Stored electronically yeah. almost. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm with you. The state mm -hmm. of West Virginia is the worst. I've never seen a state that is so behind in technology. Well, because the internet's still bad. You guys knew that, right? It's not even, <laughs> oh, gosh, don't even start there. I was going to say, it's not even that. It's just lack of, I don't even know. It is unbelievable how much stuff is not done electronically anymore. Yes. Like e even the DHHR is the worst. Mm -hmm. they, they have zero forms that you can get electronically, fill out electronically, and then resubmit electronically. Yeah. Everything has to be handwritten. I mean, I know Justin goes through all yeah. these forms that are just... Yeah, and I'm just sitting there thinking, surely uh, someone reading my handwriting has to be less efficient than... Like in theory, a computer system that could be like, okay, here's your yeah application last year, here's this year. Has anything changed really? It could scan the entire document. Yeah, yeah make it doable. You're right. Don't even scan it. Just have it all carry over. I mm -hmm. mean, the, yeah, the IRS does this. Yeah, the, you know, yep. TurboTax figuring it out. Yeah. Would you like to load in last year's information? You betcha. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the uh, HHR. We need this handwritten. Thank you. Yeah, that's yeah. the problem. TurboTax is a private entity. He's like, hey, we need something more sufficient. This is, you're dealing with state government, you know. Oh, I know. The DHHR, <laughs> and I, I like what the DHHR does. They're just terribly inefficient. Yeah. In the state of West Virginia, anyway. Uh, Hands writing. Yeah, handwriting. That's, I agree with you, Justin. It's like, man. And it has to be blue week. It can't be. <laughs> I don't even know if they make that. You can probably write in crayon. But, you know, who in this day and age? Oh, I, yeah. And literally pulling up. My handwriting from last year and rewriting it, but you know, yeah, it's like, geez, uh, <laughs> making a little change here and there, but for the most part, yeah, basically keeping yeah. everything the yeah. same. All right, well, what else you got on that, Injo? Backup, backup, backup. I don't even know what that means, but okay. <sighs> <laughs> you know, that is uh, so. Again, Marietta College, they have their stuff together, as far as I know, because uh, everything Kel does is on the line. Yeah, like it's all like I, he doesn't save anything locally to his device. It all yeah stores in the that cloud. I know of. I mean, from what I understand, because he was able to access his account through my computer when we were traveling for soccer one day. He's like, "Hey, I need to check into my account," and he typed it. He's like, "Okay, yeah, that's submitted. Okay, I'm good." That's, that's, like, that's pretty what, nice. What kind of magic is this you speak of? Yes. <laughs> Why does my computer have to be used in this ordeal? <laughs> That's a step up from my day. I mean, we oh, yeah. we weren't totally online like that. I mean, we used computers constantly, but not not so much submitting totally digitally like that. So right, that's I'm nice. Not, just gonna clue you in on my age here. Yeah. We didn't even we didn't get computers until like my sophomore year, and that was in a computer lab. I remember having a word processor, which gave you four lines of text. <laughs> and you talk about a fiasco. Try try doing a ten. 20 page paper on four lines of text. Four lines at a time. Yeah, four lines at a time with the orange screen. I was just like, man. <laughs> it's ridiculous. At least that 
you were there when like an email came through or something. Yeah, we, I was like, the first Whoa. cross yeah. campus email yeah. that had a photo in it. Mm -hmm. And it was sitting there going pixel by pixel. Boom, boom, boom. It took 20 minutes. I remember we went and got pizza and came back to the wait and see what the picture was. There was a horse in a field. <laughs> I was like, man, I feel like we just got cheated. <laughs> Yeah, first yeah, I mean, across campus. That we, rural West Virginia, too. I mean, yeah. even 10 years later, still there's, uh, yeah, that pixel by pixel line well, by line. I remember we stuff had going on. the five and a half inch or whatever. The five and a quarter or five three and a half. Yeah. Now, which one's like the big floppy well, one? We, we had the five and a quarter, and okay. everybody's like, we got this newest thing. Yeah, it's a three and a half. I love it. The three and a half, and it was hard, so yes. you didn't have to worry about crinkling it. Yeah. Because the five and a quarters were flimsy, and if you bent them wrong and got a little crease in it, it was gone. Yeah, two words, Oregon Trail. Yeah, so I remember <laughs> the three the and a half, one. and we were like, "This thing is awesome," and you get, you know, and then you saved all your work. At I also remember like a computer lab going blinking, like everything was blinking. You lost all your work. Yeah. So you get everybody got in the habit of saving everything every five minutes. You're like, yeah. save, save. Good so, saves. so see, that knowledge is still prevalent today. Back up, back up, back up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so the last, most certainly not least, check out the software discounts. Check the college bookstore. You can save a ton of money on software. It literally, depend, again, depending on what program of, of you are planning to study, there are massive yeah. student discounts. Yeah. You, know, you know, like I said, it's been a day or two since Justin and I have been in the college, but mm -hmm. like I remember getting Microsoft Office, like the the ultimate package where they called it at the time mm -hmm. for like 79 bucks that was a 650 dollar license oh yeah and i got it for 79 bucks and i owned it yep and so with the subscription plan unless the plans changed over the last year or two you can get if you have a college email address a dot edu email address you can get four years of office 365 Pullman student for 79 bucks yeah that's a hundred dollars a year if you buy it retail right or 79 dollars a year one or the other but it's like it's an it's an amazing deal. Oh yeah, yeah, all good stuff. That's you know, kids nowadays have a lot of benefits. You just gotta go find them. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that concludes this week's tip of the week. Well, by God, it's a good one, Joe. Just in time. Very timely. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For college. So if you have a kid that's going to college, if you have any questions, call Joe. We'd be more happy to help you out. Yeah. Yeah. Get in touch with your have. school. Figure out. Uh, yeah. If they're required to get something, you know, right. look into their on-campus easy repairs and stuff like that, because otherwise, I mean, a week or two of not having your computer as a student, that could totally screw your kids' uh, pro oh, yeah. productivity up. So yeah, don't yeah, don't yeah. go down that road. Make sure you yeah. and, get them set up right. And I got to say, the disclaimer for me was uh, before we knew what Marietta's deal was, I talked to Joe about, hey, what kind of computer should we get? Mm -hmm. You know, what does Kale need? What's the average college kid need? You know stuff like that so and we had and we had this exact conversation yeah we did we had this exact conversation and it helped tremendously because then i knew what questions to ask the college and it turns out when i called they're like oh you don't have to worry about any of that <laughs> <laughs> and i saved you a ton of ton of money didn't i yeah oh I, yeah otherwise i'd have been sitting there worrying about which i was worried about you know yeah. what kind of computer does he need to go and so yeah but a uh, headache resolved when i called uh, which you know was your recommendation first thing call the college speak to the it department ask them what you need yeah and uh, of course, they said the same thing. Don't worry about it. You already paid for it. It's, <laughs> it's in the tuition. He'll get it when he gets here. Yeah. So, uh, good stuff. But anyway, all right. Can't recommend that enough. An outstanding tip of the week, Jeff. So. Well, thank you. As always, I love the tips of the week, especially when they pertain to me and I can use them. <laughs> and it works out good for me sometimes. Yeah. So it's even better. All right. Well, that's uh, this week's show. We'll wrap it up with that. So, we talked a little bit about... Uh, band books. Yeah, digital library. If you need to go read your band books, and uh, for all you knuckleheads out there, before you jump on jump on the band book bag, bandwagon, read the books. Yeah, make your own decision. Yeah, you know, that, that's yeah. Here's a crazy idea. How about independent thought? Yeah, hey, don't be a sheeple. Yeah, I learned that one <laughs> uh, like a year ago, and I've yet to use it. And there you go. <laughs> First time I've used that one. Don't be a sheeple. That's a sheep person. I guess for people. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Gosh, people. <laughs> if you need a cause, why don't we solve like world hunger? I mean, we've been trying to do that for 80 some years now. Right. But that's always a good cause. Um, don't make too much sense though. Well, you know, or, or help out, you know, foster kids. Yeah. Great cause. Yeah. Um, 
So I'm just throwing those two out there. Just that, you know, if you feel like you need something in your life that you need to go fight for to have reason or purpose, Go find world something hunger, of real value. Yeah, yeah. World hunger, foster kids. Hey, yeah, those are great ones. And there's a lot of good things out there. You can do food bank help. Right. Yeah, you could you could uh, do more than just uh, worry about silly stuff like banned books. Yes. Anyway. All right. And then uh, Facebook and Spotify. Yep. Get your Facebook thing. Get your Facebook money and uh, yeah, help cover the cost of the Spotify race. I know. We're running down our own uh, rebate, or not rebate, but our uh, own podcast host. Yeah. No, our, our check coming back from Facebook. Oh, yeah. Getting more people involved. <laughs> our pie is getting smaller. Yeah. Gets, yeah, our slice Dang. of the pie is going down. Dang you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should have had a conversation off air. Look, yeah. hey, guys, I got a tip. Yeah, yeah, go fill this out. Yeah. But anyway. You All can right. hear from me and you know nothing. Well, Joe, if anybody has any questions, if, okay. you, if they get to that crossroads and they, their child needs a laptop for school, what? how they get a hold of you? You can give us a call at our office at 304-927-3588. Check out our website at amdigitaltech.com. Be sure to follow us on all social medias. We're on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram at amdigitaltech. And be sure to subscribe to the podcast, Help Desk with Joe and Dave. We're on all the major platforms, and all of our episodes are hosted by Spotify Podcasts. Ooh, Spotify. Yeah. One dollar more, Spotify now. Yeah, but you can listen to us free. We don't charge for this. Yeah, as quali- yeah. high quality we are, we don't charge for this. <laughs> <laughs> you get the best quality for free. Yeah. Gosh, what a misnomer. Anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Well, we'll be back next week with another great show. Again, thanks to A and M Digital Technologies, powering everything behind the scenes. And Joe, you've been busy for us here lately. We're getting uh, ending up summer and having all our computers gone through for the fall, so uh, that all falls on Joe and Cena's shoulders. And uh, oh shoot, who's the third person? Nick. Nick. I want to say Mike all the time. I know that is not right. Nick. Poor old Nick's shoulders. So you guys uh, running your local business here can't say that enough. Shop local. We have a lot of wonderful local businesses, and uh, again, A and M Digital Technologies powering everything behind the scenes here at Patch. And. Uh, <laughs> Gonna have your hands full with all our fall stuff. So here we go. <laughs> That's it's, what we're here for. Yeah, the world's run by our computers now, and uh, so good stuff across the board. But we'll be back next week with more. So make sure you join us, and uh, everybody have a great week. Stay cool. Be happy we're not in Phoenix. Yes. <laughs>